As a fan of the Wu-Tang Clan, I was really excited to read Raekwon's book, Staircase to Stage. I was really interested to hear Raekwon's story and his perspective on the Wu-Tang Clan. So let's start the conversation. In a world state of mind, we start a conversation. In a world state of mind. The book begins with a very strong line, I met my father once. It's a really powerful way to set the social stage. Instantly, I was engaged and I wanted to know more about his childhood and how he grew up without a father figure. It was a very strong way for him to start talking about his childhood. As with a lot of autobiographies, the first half of the book he talks about his childhood and growing up in his environment, but although he does that, he doesn't go too into depth about his personal life and his relationships, which is something I would have liked to have heard more of so I could have got to know him a little better as a fan. The subtitle of the book, Raekwon and the Wu-Tang Clan, kind of gives away that it's written a bit more of him in the context of the Wu-Tang Clan, and maybe that's what he wanted to be the focus of this book. It gives you a background and sets the tone for what it was like growing up in 80s and 90s New York on the street corners of Park Hill, Staten Island. It was a time where there was a lot going on, including the development of hip-hop, which is really interesting to hear about for me as someone as a fan who's not from the USA. It's almost a backstage pass into one of the minds of the Wu-Tang Clan. I chose to listen to the audiobook because I prefer it when the author is telling their story, but this one was a little bit different as he had somebody else narrating and then he sort of jumps in with a few answers to almost interview questions. It was a format that I personally didn't like because I found the back and forth a bit too distracting and also the narrator's voice wasn't one that I recognised. I would have preferred it and enjoyed it a lot more if Raekwon had been telling his whole story directly to me. I feel like it would have been a bit more immersive. For me personally, I felt that autobiography really picked up when Raekwon started talking about the development of the Wu-Tang Clan. That's when we kind of got into the nitty gritty details. One thing that I've always wondered about Wu-Tang is how did they function together as nine different talented individuals who were all going to have huge egos and there were going to be clashes. And this is something that Raekwon talks about. Raekwon is very honest and open, which I appreciated, as it's hard to talk about the group dynamics without being offensive and touching on politics, so I understand how hard it is. And it's also something that us fans really want to hear about. So some of the things that he said really gave context to a few things for me. For example, when Wu-Tang Forever dropped, I felt like, I don't want to say I was disappointed, but I did feel like it wasn't as strong as the other albums, and I wasn't really sure why. And Raekwon speaks on this and he says that during the production of Wu-Tang Forever, not all the members were really present, physically and mentally, not going into the studio. They had a lot going on and everything just made a lot more sense. He also talks about how they progressed throughout their careers and it became more about making money than music, which um, is quite a natural thing to happen. And I've seen Wu-Tang members perform on stage over the years from the 90s and there was times where I was disappointed when not all the members showed up at their performances when it was advertised as Wu-Tang Clan. This is also something that Raekwon touches on in the book and I really appreciated that because it was something that I had also personally experienced. As with a lot of hip-hop artists, I wish I could have been there to see them at the peak of their careers. But hearing Raekwon's memoir really gives context to a lot of what was going on and it's quite reminiscent and there was a lot going on in their lives that we might not have known about and it's quite incredible to think that they produced music of such high quality when they did, when they had everything going on and the way he spoke about it was very authentic and it just shows that determination and dedication and hard work can get you everywhere. With any big group such as the Wu-Tang Clan, you're going to have individual dynamics within that group and Raekwon mentions that he gelled a lot more with Ghostface and that they were both really into fashion which again gave more context. One of the things that he mentioned that made me chuckle was him giving Ghost the idea of wearing robes and being fly and when I think back to it, I didn't even question the fact that Ghostface was wearing robes, I just thought this is Ghost, this is him being extravagant and really that's what it was all about, he was being fly. And that was the whole point. And of course, Raekwon touches on his solo album, Only Book for Cuban Links, which is a classic. I also really enjoyed how he described working with Nas on this album. It was something that I personally really enjoyed. Um, I found it was very descriptive. And I also liked the fact that he addressed Ghostface calling out Biggie on one of his skits, uh, saying that he copied Nas's album cover. But then meeting Big and making sure that there was no hard feelings between them and it was all love and this happened to be just before he was tragically killed. 
I, I really like the fact that he mentioned this because of a lot of us won't have known what had gone on in the background and it's nice to know that they kind of reconciled if there was no hard feelings because the 90s was an incredible time with a lot of really talented artists, everybody was coming up and it's just nice to know that they were able to, to meet. Naturally there was rivalry, there was competition but there was love so it was nice that this was mentioned. He also talked about some of his tracks on Only Built For Cuban Links and I remember when I was young having this vivid memory of going on work experience to this hospital, being really nervous because I'd never been in a work environment and to sort of calm my nerves I was listening to incarcerated Scarfaces on my Walkman on cassette tape on the bus and I used to listen to it every day before I went there and it hyped me up and it's just funny to hear Raekwon saying he wrote that track when he was really unmotivated when he was in prison and it somehow really motivated me, somebody, a young girl in London and it just reminds me of how beautiful hip hop is and that we take inspiration from each other so I really liked hearing about how he wrote that track because I have a personal story, a personal connection to that track of course, no story about the Wu-Tang Clan is complete without mentioning RZA. He talks about RZA having the vision, he was the rap shepherd that brought them all together. It starts off very heartwarming but then it goes into talking about RZA's ego and the issues that some of the members had with the Wu-Tang Clan management, RZA trying to produce for other groups off the Wu-Tang name and also his brother Divine and their finances. I do appreciate the honesty but sometimes I felt the honesty was a bit too much as this was one of the main points that I remembered from reading this memoir or listening to this memoir and it stayed with me which is not something I would take away as being a positive um, because Raekwon talks about how his career progressed and he became a lot more business savvy and he grew and he said that when he tried to organize his own group and it didn't work out it gave him a lot more appreciation for what RZA was doing but he didn't go into more detail and I just wish he had elaborated a bit more on this and on his growth as an artist, as a businessman, as someone in the music industry I, I just got the feeling that the tensions between himself and RZA hadn't been resolved I could be wrong but I felt like he didn't mention it which was a shame because it didn't leave on a positive note in my mind although I think everybody's grown a lot from the early days of the Bhutan clan. I don't want to give away too much more about the book but that's the gist of it. All in all it's a great story about someone who came from nothing, nurtured his talent and worked hard to leave a legacy. Check it out especially if you're a Wu-Tang fan, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, if you like this video please like and subscribe for more content.